Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna take a look at Prima Arena and the Open Master League. And as I don't have my own build yet because I'm waiting for the community day, we're going to have some battles here from one of the best players in the world. Like you saw most like the video on Monday, I think it was, about like the Shadow Gyarados from this player already. Honestly, like those games that I saw there were absolutely insane. I have no idea how those games are going to be here today, but like on last time it was like one of the best spells they have ever seen for um, PvP in general. Like I don't know how he pulls off most of the wins he gets, but honestly, he's crazy insane. I think he's currently ranked six in the world with his team as well. So today we're gonna take a look at the Prima Arena, which is going to be like such a cool Pokemon in the current meta. Also, what I find kind of interesting is that this player is running also Giratina. Giratina is a Pokemon that I kind of, I don't know, ranked a little bit lower, which might not be correct, who knows? Like in my last tier list for the Open Master League, we're gonna find out today. The thing is with Giratina, it's kind of decent against most of the current fairy type Pokemon, which is kind of funny as a dragon type, but it struggles against um, those Dialgas, those um, Palkias, so let's see how this is going to go here. First battle, we're going to have a Xerneas in the back and the Giratina still lurking in the back as well. So you can actually just stay in with your own Giratina because you know already that your own um, Prima Arena is going to have a great time against the opponent's Giratina, which is going to be very good for you. So you're going to decide to go for the bait here. This is going to be totally fine as the opponent decides to use a shield and you're going to get the boost as well, which does not matter. Most likely as one Moonblast is going to be easily enough to knock you out, but now you can charm them down. And this is like the beauty of Prima Arena. Prima Arena is by far the hardest answer to park here and here the opponent already can forfeit as well and a lot of other Pokemon as well. Especially when this Pokemon is gonna get the move Hydro Cannon, it's going to be everywhere in the open Mastic. Okay, yeah, second opponent, goodbye there immediately. <laughs> that was hilarious. But here we're going to see one of the benefits of um, the Giratina. Against Pokemon like Zacian, you're actually going to have a fairly decent play, especially if they run Quick Attack, which is going to be double resisted as a fast move. We're going to see a player of coming through. Player of is kind of needed in the nowadays meta for the Zacian as Palkia is around, but definitely way better against, but also of course against Giratina. And here we see the matchup that everybody wanted to see. There is literally nothing Palkia can do. Every single shield scenario you lose as a Palkia, there's nothing they can do. Awkward Tail coming through another awkward hill coming through this is the best they can do and you can actually leave here with so much energy as well which is absolutely wild honestly prima arena is such a strong pokemon in the current meta it is absolutely wild because like just a starter pokemon but you see already you can take another ko <laughs> they're going to have a giratina in the back and you can ah uh, closely nearly like you need to actually got to another disarming voice but you're actually going to be in a tough spot right now because um the opponent's giratina which i think is a shando um, it's going to have an energy lead and you kind of have to try to maybe catch a move or something We have to see the opponent goes for a shadow ball very likely here exactly and you have to kind of go for the bait of close combat Which I do agree with as well as we see the close combat is coming through going to get shielded and most likely another close combat is coming in very soon Let's see you have forced to go for a shield here. It's going to be a very tough matchup for you we gotta see the swap out immediately here. You can still go for the Omnius Wind. This is going to be amazing for you now because it's gonna force the final shield. I don't know who wins CMP, but I think it's Xerneas. Based on the CP, it's definitely going to be Xerneas. Let's see, even the close comment will be enough. And yes, you can win the CMP tie. Winning you the game here with a double resisted close comment. What a game that was. Moving on to the next opponent, we're going to have a Landorus in the lead. Fairly neutral lead for you. I think you win this maybe in the zero shields. Going to be an interesting one here for sure. The opponent swaps out into Dialga and you can go into your Prima Arena. Here's another thing about Prima Arena. Dialga basically always wants Draco Media, and so Iron Head is the best move to go for, but unlike other fairy type Pokemon, here it's going to be neutral, so they're forced to go for another one, otherwise you can just go for the shield and farm them all the way down, which is going to be great for you as well. So, like, this is going to be such a great position for you, as now Dialga is going to go down, this is like the difference between other fairy type Pokemon Prima Arena, is only going to take neutral damage from the Iron Head instead of super effective damage. You're going to let this move go through, which is very interesting, because now all the energy kind of goes to waste, but of course you can swap back into <laughs> that Xerneas, you know, against the opponent's Palkia, yeah, that's great for 
for you. What a counter here as well. The fairy type is going to definitely have a great time here, but it's still going to be interesting because I think with a shield up for the opponent, this game is not actually over. You're gonna go for the undershot. Perfect undershot. I told you before, this player is insane. Like, literally perfect undershot to get an extra free fast move in is absolutely wild. In comes now the stone edge from the opponent, and you can just go for the baits here. This is going to be an interesting matchup still for you because you're going to be one shield down. The opponent's gonna go for their first shield here already, but you can take a move here, and so I think you can just go for the save play and go for two shadow balls and i think you're still going to be fine and that's exactly what you're going to do here first shadow ball coming through the opponent is going to decide to let this move go through and so this is going to be a game over Moving on, we're going to have a Mewtwo in the lead. A great lead for you, as you can see that the opponent swaps out into Dialga, and Dialga is not going to appreciate the Prima Arena matchup again. You can just go for one shield, farm them all the way down, and this is going to be great for you. You're going to let the first move go through, shield up the second one, I would imagine. You could also decide to go for a disarming voice if you want to, and you actually want to this time around, which will allow you to get the knockout before, or like, get the shield from the opponent, which is also going to be great. You could, yeah, I think you guys just gonna use a shield, exactly, I, I thought, like, maybe you could even let this move go through and get some energy on your other Pokemon, but like this, you can realign, you can still go for a charge move here, which is gonna do some decent damage, but still gonna leave it a little bit above half health as you get farmed down, which is a little bit annoying, but still, at least you put them kinda into range, where the Shadow Claw down is a possible option for you, but you might have to use an extra shield here against the opponent, as I feel like the energy is kinda worth it, exactly, especially as you cannot farm them down with the Geomancy and in comes now the Gyarados again. Gyarados kinda gets a little bit more popular as well like recently apparently here which is kind of interesting. So, like, this is high, high up on the leaderboards, like, literally page one. So, people are running Gyarados now, which is kind of funny. But here, again, an undercharge that is maybe a little bit too greedy. I'm not too sure. You can go for the full farm down. The opponent doesn't even go for a charge moment. This is going to be game over. What the hell? Next opponent. Um... It's kind of actually more of a neutral one, but the opponent swaps out anyway immediately into the Dialga. I wonder if this matchup is going to be a little bit different here for you. I think it's still kind of the same. You can let one move go through. Um, basically, shield up the second one, just farm them down, or go for one disarming voice. Basically, the opponent does a little bit less damage than before, but they can also tank way more damage. So, let's see here. Disarming voice, not going to take the knockout, but you can still win this in the zero shield scenario. Great for you. Issue is, the opponent can fa fully farm you down, basically, and you can still go for a disarming voice here. But, again, it's not going to be the greatest, as this is going to be resisted. If this Pokemon, or like, when this Pokemon gets Hydro Cannon, it's not really an if. This Pokemon going to be insane. It's kind of sad for Prima Arena though that it's um, second like signature move basically, which we saw already with like Incineroar with Darkest Lariat um, or like Spirit Shackle on the Decidueye. Unlike those where it's like the secondary typing, like Dark for example for Darkest Lariat or like Ghost for Spirit Shackle. We're going to have for Prima Arena, I think, I don't actually forgot the name of the move itself, but it's definitely going to be a water type move. And it's very unlikely that it's going to be a better move than um, what it already has than with Hydro Cannon. So most likely the secondary move that this Pokemon you're gonna get on its community day. Not going to be a very interesting for PvP or anything, but here we're gonna see that the opponent most likely would have been able to farm me down, but the close combat still coming through is going to be great, as it can now farm them down with your Giratina. They still get to move, you're forced to use a shield, but you have some energy now, and I think the energy might be enough for the ho -Oh. Let's find out, yeah, for sure, as the opponent still has to go for a charge move against you. You can otherwise farm them all the way down. I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, the opponent set the forfeit anyway. Moving on, they actually forgot uh, to cut out the name of the battles. Basically, um, I get those battles um, already pre-cut because they always want to kind of keep the identity of the battles that they face kind of um, yeah, in a secret because like in a higher up elo range, a lot of people also kind of snipe or like try to snipe certain teams from opponents or like make spreadsheets for whatever reason really. But um, yeah, for this battle, he forgot to cut them out, so I just called it out quick, so like yeah, and now we're gonna start back basically into the game. We want to have here the Dialga going for an Iron Head again. We saw this battle already, or like not the battle, but like the kind of matchup already. And you're gonna see as well that the Lugia is going to not really do that much damage. Actually, <laughs> that was really close. Like one HP on that Primarina, very calculated. Being able to now go into the Xerneas against the Palkia is going to be great for you, as the opponent can go for the Awkward Tail, but like it's not going to do anything. You can easily knock them out. Like go for yeah, one more fast move or two more fast moves would be fine 
The Moonblast coming through and again, a crazy undercharge, but the opponent decides to use a shield anyway. And so you can let this move go through, you don't really have to shield anything here. It's going to be another awkward tail, which is not going to do enough damage. And in comes another Moonblast, which is going to take the knockout for sure. No undercharge this time around. And in comes also the Lugia, which is going to forfeit now. Next opponent, we're going to encounter a Ho-Oh in the lead, which is going to be great for you, exactly kind of where you want to face this Pokemon, as it can go straight for the Shadow Ball, this is perfect fast move timing against a Ho-Oh as well, after 7 fast moves you kind of want to throw as the Giratina, and so you can, actually you're no shielding this one, which is interesting, it's going to be the Brave Bird, and you can still take it, and the opponent swaps out into a Zacian, which is running the fast move of Quick Attack, so you can actually just stay in here and going to have a great time, but you might actually want to swap out eventually, I'm not too sure, because like this is going to be a best answer for Ho-Oh as well, at least you got the Ho-Oh a little bit lower already, but it's not going to be as ideal, I'm gonna go for the bait here, don't know if the opponent decides to go for a shield here for that, they decide not to, but you can still realign your Pokemon, which is going to be important, as let's see what they're going to have in the back here, might be something like a Dialga, it is actually a Dialga, so great guess by me I would say, but the opponent, of course, is going to have an okay time here still. Like, the damage that he kind of do here doesn't really help you if the opponent decides to swap out afterwards. Because, um, basically, your Pokemon in the back... Yeah, exactly. Your Pokemon in the back, the Xerneas, like, you can still kind of one-shot them with a close combat after a little bit of prior damage anyway. Like, that was a little bit too much prior damage. But you can still actually reach the disarming voice. This is so important. Like, getting this move off is, like, so important. Primarina showcasing again why it's so great. And you can let this move go through. Through, like you don't really oh you're actually going to use a shield here that's interesting i would have basically let this move go through it doesn't really matter anyway but um yeah you can just go for close combat and you win with that because it can easily take uh iron head and the opponent knows it as well so it doesn't really matter let's move on to the next one we're going to have a Landorus in the lead. A Landorus is going to be a great matchup for you for the lead, kind of. Again, it's kind of more neutral. You should be able to take two Sansia Storm pretty easily. You are kind of bulky with Giratina. In comes the Xerneas, and again, it's kind of a matchup which you kind of like, but it is still kind of tricky for you. As you're going to swap out now into your own Xerneas, you kind of get some prior damage onto them, which will allow you now to um, go ahead and go for the Moonblast, which will knock them out. Which is kind of great. You decide to shield up the Moonblast from the opponent while trying to steam p -tie. This Xerneas, by the way... Oh, did it actually just the hat change there a little bit? I think it did. I don't know. <laughs> Look kind of weird. Um, this Xerneas, by the way, is level 51. So, um, it's going to win CMP tie all the time against other Xerneas, which is kind of important. Here, yeah, maybe not ideal, it's going to be a close combat most likely from the opponent, and so you decide to let this move go through. You might try to go for the full farm down with the Primarina, which should be able to do it in time, exactly. And now let's see what's coming back in. It's going to be the Landorus, like while you're a water-type Pokemon, you don't do water-type damage really yet, until basically you're going to get Hydro Cannon, which is going to be way cheaper than Hydro Pump. In comes now the Dialga, is going to be a very tough battle for you. What I could see here though as a win con is, um, that you might just go ahead and try to go for the full farm down. Basically just go ahead, use a shield, farm them all the way down and get two disarming voices off against the opponent's Landorus. This would be, in my opinion, the win con here. Let's see if the player is going to do this. We're gonna see most likely exactly what I just said. Yep, we're gonna see the full farm down. We have two disarming voices going for one fast move, one disarming voice, and you can do the exact same again for the next one. Basically being perfectly energy efficient. And as the opponent doesn't get to another move in time, this is going to maybe knock them out, but even if not, you should be able to survive a move, but yeah, it's going to be enough and we can move on to the next opponent. Landorus and lead again. Um, again, going to be a fairly neutral one for you. This is going to be okay. Honestly, like, Giratina is doing a great job. I did not really expect that this would still be that decent on the current meta, where it's around Fairy-type Pokemon plus the Giratina and Dialga. But um, it's kind of okay against something like, yeah, the Landorus, or even against Xerneas and Zacian, you can still do something, because your main damage is going to be, of course, the um, yeah, Ghost-type damage, which is really important, way better than, like, the Drang-type damage for, for you, of course, even though you are a Drang-type Pokemon. It looked like a little bit of lag, but I don't know if it's really important. Here we will see the Shadow Ball connecting. Are you going to let the next move go through is my question. You could decide to realign, but I'm not too sure if it's going to be too important. Sensei Storm coming through, and you're going to try to just win this game, I guess, with your Prima Arena. You let this move go through. You might want to swap out now afterwards, because it is kind of 
like likely that they're going to put something in here where your Xerneas might be better, but you decide to stay in for a little bit because it's going to put them now into range for one close combat. And this is a very smart decision by this player because before, like, close combat does around the exact same amount of health that the opponent currently has. And so I think this would be the play for them. But the opponent tries to predict this, catches his move on a Palkia, but completely fails with this. And now we see another undercharge, which is a great way of just basically farming them all the way down, getting up to two close combats again. This player is like so insane at the game, and again, the model for Zerni is changed for whatever reason. And we can move on into the final game for today. And we can now see where they connect their 5 and 0 set here, which is kind of nice. And we're also going to see that they're going to be able to reach the next rank of expert as like one of the first people in the world. Insane gameplay. Thanks so much again for letting me showcase your gameplay here as well today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you then. Bye bye.